we are. So, I'm thinking of uh, that movie Saturday Night Fever, <laughs> where uh, the guy's going, it's happening, <laughs> it's happening! <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Uh, someone told me corduroy's back in. I, that's not why I'm wearing this. Uh, unless my father is more hip to this stuff than I am, because he bought it for me. <laughs> Matches my shoes. I did buy the shoes, and they got ruined the other day by the rainfall. It's, but uh, as Billy tells me, now they look like wingtips. <laughs> I don't mean to be doing a stand-up routine here. I'm not, I am not a fucking comedian at all. But there is like a stain, as you can see, right at the, right at the front there. But it, they do look like wingtips. Uh, how many people have been to this show? Okay, that's 22 people. So, um, well, if you haven't been to the show before, um, nothing to be embarrassed about. It's, um, it's just conversation. It's conversational jazz. And um, so uh, I try to, to get people who I think I can have a conversation with, uh, because that's all it's going to be. I, I try to uh, do some homework. But when you know someone, you don't really need to do any research. You have all that personal history to fall back on. So hopefully that's what will happen tonight with at least one of our guests, because it doesn't know, you know, Billy also will book guests that are unknown to me. <laughs> but then I get to know them beforehand. Uh, you know, I try to do my homework. I never did it in school. I try to do it now. It's a little late, I guess, but to be doing homework. But... Uh, um, Billy, should I say something about our, our guest who m might not? Yeah. I have to say, one of our guests, Michael Shannon, is working, currently shooting, probably as we speak, Boardwalk Empire. And he's in Yonkers right now. Um, and he, he may get here and he may not get here just in case anyone was here to see him specifically. Uh, that's what's going on. And, uh, but in the meantime, we have some lovely uh, guests. And uh, uh, our, our, our first guest is, is somebody that I've uh, worked with a couple of times and that I've known for a, a long time. And, and uh, I know her and you know her. Uh, she, she's uh, currently on a show called Orange is the New Black. Um, and let's get this started. I'm, I'm just going to invite her up here, and we're going to do this thing. Uh, and uh, here she is, Natasha Leone. <laughs> This is your seat right here. Thank you. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Natasha. Yeah. So let's, I'm just going to say, Natasha and I, we're in a movie together. <laughs> Two, actually. More than one, right? More than one. Yeah. But the one that really... Uh, it was called Slums of Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Isn't that great? It gets applause. It's like it's, it's a, a it's a really it's a great it's movie. It's I mean, it's I, I it's did a legitimately not know good then movie. that it was like going to be so rare how hard it is to make a a movie that really holds up and that's uh, decent and people like and I mean, so many many movies I made. I've never seen no one else has seen. I don't even know if they uh, came out, you know what I mean? But I'm sure uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I get it, I no, get but it. You know what I mean? Like, because especially at that time, it just felt like movies were getting made and you'd be in them and there would be some element that was really promising that would like indicate, oh, this is worth making. And then they just wouldn't come together that way. Uh, that is a really rare movie. Like now there's enough time has gone by that you can look back and sort of, uh, you know, be proud of it rather than be like, uh, you know, I like to be very like shameful about most things that are current, <laughs> especially. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? You know, well, I, I, yeah. you know uh, the director went on to make at least one other film that was equally great. I think yeah. called The Savages. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and. Philip <laughs> <laughs> yes. Seymour Hoffman, yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman and Laura Linney. Great movie. Yeah. Uh, and and similar, you know, I had worked with, with uh, Tamara Jenkins, the director. I remember I saw the short film that you guys did, right? Yeah. We made a short film. Yeah. This is prior to Slums of Beverly Hills. And, you know, Tamara writes about her life. She's a very, uh, I guess, autobiographical mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes she writes about her mother. Sometimes she writes about her father. Sometimes her brother. Sometimes her brother. Uh -huh. Actually, yes, sometimes her brother. Mm -hmm. I was going to say all the time, but Was not. Marissa's character in Sons of Beverly Hills, is that based on a real person? That character I don't know about. Yeah, but I do know about your character. It's her. It's her. And yeah. she, uh, the short film that I did with her before Sons of Beverly Hills was about a mother and daughter. And the daughter was a, sort of the, the precursor for the character that you mm -hmm. played. I, I, can we talk about how we how we sort of met before we actually met? Is it okay? Well, I'm in a level because of, I don't know that I totally remember this. <laughs> okay, so I mean, you're a be, huge this figure will, this will in my be... life. Uh, I'm no, I mean genuinely, like without uh, Kevin Corgan, I mean, so much of my personality is made up and really just stolen bits of me trying desperately to be Kevin. <laughs> and there were many years that were pretty much like the Corrigan years where I would just be walking around doing impressions of him and not able to get work or keep friends. But um, no, because I mean, I was like this weird girl kind of like walking around making like, you know, doing an impression of somebody. And it was, uh, but you're just such a huge figure in my psyche. And yet I don't remember when we met. <laughs> is my that point. Is, I just want to like not, you know, minimize. You did not need the added trouble of bringing me into your layers of <laughs> psychological anything. I mean, yeah, no, but you're deep you, in Your there. personality was so, uh, uh, so, so vivid and so uh, vibrant. <clears throat> we I'll met take off on my jacket. the phone. We met on uh -huh. the phone. Huh? Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 on the phone. On the phone. We were, uh, uh, we have a mutual friend who had an apartment uh, on Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles. Michael Rappaport. Okay. I didn't his, know if we should say. His name is Mike. His name is Mike. Would you go ahead and say it? It was Michael Rappaport's apartment. Uh -huh. I had just. He used to say chilling mad hard on Beverly Boulevard, but with a thicker <laughs> accent. That was. Right? It was always about that. It was the 90s, so a lot of you are too young to identify with what that means. That's but a blast. From, I, I, remember? I, it was I always like Jill Mad Hot on Beverly Boulevard. Jill Mad Hot on Beverly Boulevard. Yeah. Right. And there was like a Tribe Called Quest mixtape in the car <laughs> that I borrowed. I borrowed that car too. Yeah, and there was like, remember in the bathroom, all the Raging Bull pictures, all the black and white photos that yes, surrounded yes. that weird circular bathtub? Yeah, Raging Bull, Rocky, Mean yeah. Streets. I did GHB in that bathtub. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but the A lot we, happened yeah. in that house. Yeah, that apartment was bonkers. I saw The Deer Hunter for the first time in that house. You showed me many movies in that house. What's the, any that you can? Well, I mean, it was of? the deer hunter, but I'm trying to think. It was like it wasn't Poppy. Did I show you the deer hunter? No, I don't know that you showed me the deer hunter. 
But I was obsessed with the deer hunter during the making of that movie. Of, of Slums of Beverly Hills? Yeah, and I was always like walking around being like, ba da ba da ba you know. And I was also really into doing push-ups before things. Am I remembering this differently? No, yeah, I, I, I remember, yeah. But I, I remember there were, there were I, I had spent, you know, uh, uh, you know, my tenure at the at the Beverly Boulevard. Uh huh. You were there. That was 1997. Yeah. I was there from '96 to early '97. So right before you moved yeah. in, I was the previous tenant. Yeah. There were like strange noises, you know, plumbing and yeah. you know pipes and heating uh, and all, all kinds of mm -hmm. things. Noises that were would just sort of freak you out if you lived there. And we talked on the phone. And you were living there. Uh -huh. This is like a year later now, after mm -hmm. I kind of left. And, and, and I remember being on the phone with you and hearing all of those noises <laughs> over the phone and, and saying, yeah, oh, hey, are you in the bathroom right now? That's... And I was usually there, I guess, <laughs> taking rolling calls. No, I mean, yeah. it was a great place because it was we were these, you know, uh, New York actors back when that, you know, meant something. And, uh, <laughs> and we would have nowhere to go. We would go there displaced trying to get a job and he had this apartment. And so we would like, all, right? It was sort of like a real transient, you know, you gotta do time there. You, yeah, that was the place. Yeah. You know, there's always a legendary place, you know, in the early 60s. It was like Dave Van Ronk's house and Bob Dylan stayed there and yeah. read all of Dave's books and, and then someone else came well, in. Well, so many things happened. I'm probably as a result of being like, uh, you know, and because it was right, um, you know, catty corner to the new Beverly, right? Is that what it is? Right, it was and walking so, distance so from the old. And you know, so you'd be like a New Yorker and I'm what, a 16 year old New Yorker. So I'm like, cool, I'll walk to the movie theater. You know, it's across La Brea, whatever. And, uh, and then uh, they had the Cassavetes like film festival happening. So I remember just being, well, I was 17, I remember being 17 and then sitting in the back of the theater at the New Beverly with like a brown paper bag and like a whatever 40 would have you, uh, you. <laughs> and then I would just, and I watched all of them and it was like game changing. Like my time on Beverly Boulevard, you know, cause just watching that and then Mike had in the house that Cassavetti's on Cassavetti's manuscript. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, and it was in its kind of, it was as though like Cassavetti's had sent him a copy before publishing it. I mean, it wasn't that, but it was just that it was unpublished. And so it was just like reading that and you, and you with the movies and the talking and then the whole experience was <laughs> game changing. And you know, Alan Arkin and, and it was just a huge, like shaped me so much. That I, home time. I remember the, the acid. I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was mushrooms. And it was it was a, a, a sort of a, a special place. Yeah. At a certain time, I remember the honey baked ham across the street. Oh I yeah, never, that's not there. It's not there anymore. I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't. Know. You know what's well, out of business? What? El Pollo Loco. Get the fuck. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Is this on network television? <laughs> on oh wait a minute. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of El Coyote. Now that's there. I, I remember talking to you and thinking, this is, I'm on the phone with Kathy Moriarty <laughs> from Raging Bull and I can't believe it. And we talked for like two or three hours. Do you know what it occurs well, to me? This is before we ever met, you it, know, in, in person. It occurs to me now and in, in thinking about it, just because I just read that Rita Moreno uh, memoir uh, in Mexico. You know, where I spend the bulk of my time. <laughs> and uh, she talks a lot about her romance with Marlon Brando. And it occurs to me that you probably really like, that for a 17 year old me speaking to you on the phone, Brando, I guess, was uh, famous in her mind anyway for taking these like 20 minute pauses on the phone while he was sort of like thinking, but that the pauses were so meaningful to her, like she understood what they meant. And later in life, you know, she gets married to a nice Jewish doctor. And she uh, is, uh, you know, uh, Brando would call and check in on her and whatever, and they would be on speaker. And when he would take his sort of Brando-esque pauses where he would sort of like, you know, get his thoughts together to say the next profound sort of, you know, spilling, whatever it was, you know, her husband would look at her like, can you get a load of this? And it occurs to me that probably our conversations, and now I'm thinking about them, we're like, a lot of that, like I feel like we'd both like be in separate states, you know, like, you know, probably if, if several drinks in, 
and like music playing separately in our houses or like you'd play me some music and we'd just sit on the phone and you know what I mean? Like 20 minutes, would pass, but it was like important. I mean, you. It was like pre-internet. It wasn't yeah. like I could just email you the song. It was like, yeah. listen to this. I'm gonna hold yeah. the phone up. To the and then speaker. it was like, oh, we're gonna listen. And then it's like, we're gonna sit and process what that song, and then we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You are a voracious, uh, you have a huge appetite for literature. You read everything. Kind of, I mean, I used to. I used to be a really big reader. I read an interview with you recently where you were, uh, uh, took the interviewer to St. Mark's Bookshop, which oh, yeah. also doesn't exist anymore. No, it's really gone? Well, not where it used to be. It's still there. It's still there. It's still there? Okay, all right. They Forgive tried me. to Sorry. shut it. I feel like I've been on many um, email chains about like save St. Mark's bookstore, right? It's got saved. Does anyone know? <laughs> did you Just go? checking in. Did, did it get, it did, right? Okay. Where? That's right. It's gonna move. Technically not. They're not going out of business, but they are moving. From okay. That old so yeah, location. no, no, no. I remember. I yes, that guy Marshall, and he was really into young adult. But he was like, you would love the Hunger Games, which it turns out he was right that it was uh, a real sensation of a book. I guess <laughs> I've not read it, uh, and he had not read many books that I was interested in. And so. you, you bought him a book too. Which book did I buy him? I can't remember. I'm look. I'm looking for it. All right. But you, you talked about a, a Thomas Pynchon novel that was like a hundred, oh, yeah. no, a thousand. Uh, Against the Day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you said, I am actually a person who's read this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I took a lot of downtime, as we, um, some of you may know. And some people take downtime and they don't read. Yeah. Well, luckily, I think when I really stepped away from life as we know it, I, I uh, you know, uh, it, I did not even have a computer. And so I actually just, you know, to pass the time would do nothing. But So when I found the Thomas Pynchon, I was like, oh, thank God, here's like a thousand pages I can get behind to give myself something to do. And in... Uh, but you know, and I've read other large books. Uh, so, so, but you know, I mean, I do like to, but I'm not, you know, the thing is I uh, did not go to college. Uh, I was in early admission to NYU. Um, I had a lot of promise. I was skipped my senior year of high school. And I was gonna be a film and philosophy double major. Uh, I was really big on like T.S. Eliot at the time and you know, Bergman, I was a teenager. And, uh, and then uh, I didn't go, so I think that like, Oftentimes, I'm reading things or going to the film forum and watching everything. But you know, a lot of it is just because I don't, you know, like I can't. Um, often, when a, you know adults uh, who are college educated are speaking, I, I really envy like somebody like a Christopher Hitchens or something. And I'll be like, oh, I wish I could speak like that on command, because they're you know so articulate and can really put their thoughts and really have a much broader scope. Like I feel like I have such limited information just because I only know about the things I know about, which is like movies, books, and music. And that's, and only the stuff I like. Like I don't really, and I don't really know how to like um, grasp or uh, even like um, internalize kind of other information as easily just because I, or write it down. I'm terrible at like, you know, some people send really fluid. You're a very good emailer. Some people send really like um, nice email, almost like it's correspondence. Like I'd be terrible at like, um, like, you know, Mary McCarthy and Hannah Arendt had wonderful, like, correspondence, or like an Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot correspondence. I'd be terrible at that because I can't really write I hear a to lot save of, my life. Yeah, no, you know, no, 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 but I mean, I can't. Like, I, uh, you know, I write, like, you know, see ya later. <laughs> like, XX, I know. you know you, what I mean? You do that, but that's like, you know, people have, like, uh, you know, different, different... Uh, yeah, so I have my skills, but they're not... And so I'm just saying that I think I was reading a lot of things because it's like, oh, to pass the time and, you know. I heard a lot of people go, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like when she mentioned all those writers. Uh, so this is a very literary crowd. We know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean. They know what you, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking I, about, you but know, they do. I wish, honestly, I think I'm really speaking about it a lot because I'm really a very um, uh, sad that I, uh, you know, I don't really do that anymore because of the you internet. Don't, you don't read anymore? Not, not like I, not do like. you have a Kindle? No. Um, no, I mean, I still travel with many books, uh, but when I, you know, What do you mean you don't there, do that anymore? Well, I just mean like I don't feel like I read them in the same way that I used to, which was like with that hunger of, 
I just, you know, like that, that real hunger of like, I have to shut my brain off. You know what I mean? And so like the same way you would listen to music really loudly or you would, you know, maybe watch a movie and be able to escape. Like, I, I feel like I used to do that with books and now I just am like Googling or I'm like on the Daily Mail or something. And I'm like, it's such a waste that how did my energy end up, you know, because I used to really, I think it was, um, I was probably, uh, maybe, I don't know if I was a happier person necessarily. I mean, I feel fine, but I, I just I just feel like even talking about Thomas Pynchon is like talking about somebody that I wish I still was in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 I'm, well, well, uh, one guest that we had on the show a few shows ago yeah. was uh, Janine Garofalo. Yeah. And I remember her saying in some interview that, you know, she, she's a reader, and yeah. she said, you know, it's the, the value of, of having that is just like uh, uh, it, it, it's invaluable. It's yeah. like because if if uh, if you can do that and if you can enjoy that and find pleasure in reading, that you will never be bored ever. Yeah. Because you'll always have a book on you. Is that something that uh, I mean? What make is well? That's uh, the other thing is I always used to like walk around you know New York and like I'd always have a book in my back pocket. Like I remember there were like. It was like a stretch that like many, for a while it was like the Rasputin book, you know? And then there was like a time when I would walk around with like the Norman Mailer, like the fight, you know? And I would like sit on the subway and just like open it, you know? And it was kind of like, it was sort of like having a cell phone. Like I am armed against the world. Like this is my armor. Like, hey, don't fuck with me. I'm the guy who's reading this Norman Mailer book about Muhammad Ali, you know what I mean? So if you want to pickpocket someone, choose another guy, you know? And like now it's just like me and my cell phone and what a bummer that is, you know what I mean? Because it's not like, I mean, how many pages was I really giving, reading in any given day when I was like, you know, taking the six train or something? Probably not many, but, you know, and so now you're just scrolling. You're spending your life with the scrolling. It's really, it's uh, such a shame, you know, what, what the heart bleed epidemic. Um, what are you currently reading? Um, I'm reading uh, this book, uh, The Lonely Life, uh, Betty Davis's autobiography. Is anybody, uh, oh. ladies? No? <laughs> Maybe you might like that book. I mean, it really starts with a bang. She's like, the day I was born, there was thunder and lightning. And you know what? God was right. Like, I mean, she is a firecracker and unashamed. Like, very different species. And like you. Not in that. Um, you know, not a not an erotic Jew, so it's a very different animal. <laughs> like, as a child, I really identified with Betty Davis's strength, you know what I mean? As like, a child? Yeah, I was really into Betty Davis when I was a little girl. Yeah. Um, but you know this, I was also really into, like, the few movies that we had in Israel, which were like, um, there was a lot of, like, you know, Pacino, De Niro, it was a real tough guy, sort of a, a house, and I was really into Betty Davis. Anyway, so, uh, it, it, but... You know, she's not at all sort of that thing of like, like, oh, please don't look at me, look at me, please don't look at me, look at me. Like, she's really just like, here I am, well, I'll take it. And <laughs> I, that's not something I immediately identify with, you know. Um, she also talks a lot, though, about like, you know, actors today, they all like, Brando, again, Brando's a big theme and things I've been reading. And, uh, and she's like, they try to just bring themselves, that's not acting. And then I felt very embarrassed, like that maybe like Betty Davis would have really thought that, you know, I was terrible at my job, essentially. <laughs> because you're bringing too much of yourself to your work? Well, I just think it's a very different sort of uh, animal. Like she talks a lot about, you know, how like dance helped her. And I like dance helps me pretty much not at all, my work. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah, she, she talks a lot about, you know what I mean? Like the body, like you have to kind of like figure out who you, character is or something. I mean, she does say that short of getting a lot of plastic surgery, no actor could actually completely bring something new each time to the role, but it just made me feel like she maybe would not love sort of modern acting and what it's become, this idea of like strip away and be sort of naturalistic would not, like I don't even know that Betty Davis would have loved Jenna Rollins, you know what I mean? I feel like maybe she would have been like, uh, you know, give me the meat or something, like stop being so human. You know? Yeah, but, you know, I think it was over for, you know, the thrill was gone for Betty Davis by the time Jenna Rollins came along. She wouldn't have recognized what was special about them anyway. Yeah. I, I don't know that, you know, I just think of, there was like a story about James Cagney where he said he, James Cagney, anybody know who that is? James Cagney. <laughs> We're old school here. <laughs> um, he yeah. said, you know, he, he, he decided to hang it up. 
when he drove through the gates of the Paramount lot and he didn't feel the thrill anymore. Huh. And he just stopped. A lot of actors today, they get to that point, I think, and they don't stop. Yeah. Or they talk about stopping and then immediately return. Yeah, because they need the money. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, you know, we're living in different economic times. Yeah. Yeah, and we're also, you know, not, you know, um, uh, guaranteed picture to picture. Like, you know, you're going to make seven and burn yourself out. And, you know, and we got to go get those jobs. So there's a certain... You got to go get it. You have, to, you have to stay vigilant. You have to be... Uh, well, due diligence. You think you, do, you know, you, you sort of make the effort that you have to make over a period of time, and like, I've done what I've had to do. And then you still have to keep doing it, as you find out. Well, it's also very different. I mean, you know, I think there's a big difference between like being a proper movie star and being an actor. I mean, it's a huge uh, difference, you know? So it's like, you know, the actor can kind of like get sort of uh, burnt out or whatever, or really, um, uh, you know, uh, dissuaded by, you know, their profession and how, you know, um, how uh, difficult it is. and, and Whatever, whereas that probably the movie star is like, I'm just so exhausted, you know, uh, from just having to be me all day and like, you know, whatever, like movie star problems. So maybe that's why they're more like into like right. retiring all the yeah. time. Shit. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, because I'm just saying it's different. Anyway, Billy. Um, I, I, my manager, t you know, whenever I have a, 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 a problem, he says, it's champagne problems. Is it though? Is it? That's what I say to him. Is it though? I mean, at a certain level, it's like, uh, you know, a human, it's, uh, you know, pain is pain. Is it all have to be a champagne kind of a pain? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, 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 we love rock music. We love Lou yeah. Reed. We love Lou Reed. We love don't Lou we Reed. Love Lou we Reed. love we Lou Reed. Love Lou yeah. I, I, I remember we, we were texting on the night that Lou Reed passed away. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I went to Manitoba's in the East Village because I was like, where else am I going to go? To, to where else is it going to uh, um, sort of mean something, to be where other people care about this kind of stuff. And like, so I don't know, I just think that you're like, you know, a, 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 a spiritual descendant of someone like that, like Lou Reed, in what you do. So you're doing that on your, on your new show now. You've sort of been... Um, I mean, thank you. Uh, I uh, should, uh, you know, be uh, so lucky to hear that sentence in my life. You know, when he said that to me that night, I, I was really, I was a wreck that day. I was really crying. I didn't cry that much when my mother died. I mean, I, it was so, I don't know what kind of like transfer and situation I was doing with the Lou Reed of it all. Um, I'd met him through Hal Wilner. That's right, you uh, met him. You know, like a, a month before, and I'd spent like six hours with him where he played me like all his remasters. and. You know, we kind of like, uh, so, like cried and like shared a box of tissues and like, you but know, he it cried was like too? a whole thing. And he had like summoned me because of uh, Orange is the New Black. I guess he was like a big fan and was watching it in the hospital. And, you know, since Hal and I were friends and, and uh, Hal's great, he does, uh, did, did I just say this? I don't remember. I got stuck thinking about Lou. Uh, Hal does all the music for Saturday Night Live. He's a really like, you know, sort of seminal figure in uh, general and, um, and a legend in his own right. And, uh, Anyway, it was just like the fucking heaviest day of my life. And I'd actually come from uh, doing, like I was like, in the early, you know, promoting of, of Orange is the New Black. And so I'd come from earlier that day doing The View and having this experience with like Barbara Walters where it's like, I'm pretty open about talking about, you know, whatever, you know, my shit with the drugs and et cetera. And, uh, and it was just so weird because on the one hand, I had this interview with this woman who was like, you know, like, I'm happy to talk to you about whatever. I'm an open book, but like, listen, lady, like, don't make me the victim of my own fucking life here, you know? And... Um, and like, I'll happily volunteer it, but like, you know, she was like, you know, crack cocaine, child acting, why? You know, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then, uh, like, so I go from that sort of jarring experience of like, okay, showbiz is so creepy, and into this other, like, and then like, I literally like, go from there down to like Bank Street over to like Lou's studio and Hal's sitting there and have this completely other experience of like what sort of like the magic uh, possibility of what this business can be like, you know, of like talking to Lou and Hal about that, which just felt totally fucking different. Like, cause it was, uh, you know, we're gonna die. And, um, <laughs> and it was, it was just bananas. It was like such a, I mean, it was with like the heaviest uh, 
sort of showbiz moment of my life was like the idea of you know getting to spend this time with Lou, who for me was just is such a massive figure of like you know every um, in many ways like every you know terrible thing that ever happened to me and every great thing that ever happened to me is like Lou Reed's fault. I feel like you know, uh, and uh, and he validated that just by I just I by mean, being it summoned. Must have been yeah, a like it just felt like you know, too. especially like as somebody who had really like you know walked away voluntarily sort of from everything essentially. You know, like the Barbara Walters thing was very much like, oh yeah, that's right, that's why. Like this thing is so fucking weird and minimizing, and uh, and you know, just like you know, creepy and manufactured, and and um, and then going over there, and it was like, oh yeah, there is a reason like why you kind of do this stuff, is it can be also very, um, you know, like lifeblood or whatever. So that was great. <laughs> uh, well, you know, as they say in, uh, I don't know, I mean, the, the, the spirit in him bowed to the spirit in you. and It was fucking insane. You know. I couldn't believe that that, I, cu I couldn't believe that I got to meet. And then, it, so I was just really, I, I took it very uh, heavy when he died. I really, um, um, sure. I, uh, I do want to say, I mean, well, just because like the idea that like he can, you know what I mean? It just for some reason, it just feels like he's such an immortal figure and just you know well it's like george harrison everything said about, aging like, the Beatles. And that. it's like you know you they they give their nervous systems you know as we do as everyone does but you know when you're in this business and you're trying to work at a a a, a, a level where your priority as an artist is to bring truth to to your work it's it's it, it takes a lot out of you and uh, the more sensitive you are uh, you know the the greater the risk yeah so, uh, well, I feel like you, I know we're going to ramp up, but I just, uh, I really feel it was uh, wild, you know, uh, talking to Taylor Schilling, who I guess you'd worked with a little bit. And, you know, um, who was the uh, actress that you had sent uh, us the email about, like, uh, you know, Brando and the actress that he liked so much? Do you remember? Oh, Kim Stanley. And uh, I just feel like you're this figure that's really been uh, very generous. Like, how many people that you've impacted without which. Uh, they wouldn't be anything resembling who they are because they wouldn't have known like where to look for the information, you know? Um, so I'm very grateful to you for that, Kevin, and uh, I know I'm not alone in that. Hey, it's thanks, real, I appreciate uh, that. It's, it's... A real, uh, it's a real gift to make people like want to look at things that they would otherwise not know of. Well, thank you so much thank for being you. here, Natasha. This is you. Natasha Leone. Wow. Oh, okay. And now, I did not know who these women were. <laughs> Four days ago, and now I just feel like I know them. They're on a show. They're incredible right now. young people. Yes, incredibly young. And uh, uh, I know them now, and you know them. Uh, from the show, they have a show on Comedy Central called Broad City. There you go. Oh my God, the, 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 the stars and creators of Broad City, Abby Jacobson and Ilana Glazer. Yeah. <laughs> Can we hug? Can we hug? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Oh, you took the far seat. Wow. Great intro, Natasha. Look at you guys. That was so inspiring and real. That was. I was like, I don't have anything good to say. I was like, I haven't lived. I'm a piece of shit. I'm a piece of shit. You guys are wildly talented, incredible young people. Incredible. Big fan. Yeah, I mean, come on. That's insanity. Now, do you do you feel like you have nothing to say now because you say so? much in the show like what part of your real life is left to talk about after you reveal so much in the we show always we're drastically different characters that we portray on screen I mean, <laughs> I mean, so, um, very like us very similar um, but we always worry that we don't have enough to say we like got to the writers room this year and we were like we're empty trash bags. <laughs> yeah, right. It's so like nerve-wracking. You were in the writers' room today, working on season two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, has has all of season? <laughs> How exciting is that? To, oh, it's to be? crazy. Do you? I mean, do you find that you're kind of like, oh my god, 
Uh, well, you, 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 first of all, you had the web series before the Comedy Central series. Yeah. Now, how, how, did you feel like you'd, uh, did, I, I haven't seen the web series. Did you end up sort of borrowing stuff from the web series to, to bring to Comedy Central, or did you just wipe the slate clean, start from scratch? I mean, some little bits we've, I mean, some stuff like last season, we like tried to do for this one thing, for example, um, really just refilm it. Oh, it was a great webisode. Let's we just really refilm it. To recreate it. Garbage. It sucked. It was like it was, it was like, a waste of a like it was like a so subway much money scene. that like it was production like, costs. Such bullshit. Um, so yeah. many uh, other people involved. It was like why did we do this? And it was like because it was such like a magic little moment of us stealing a shot in the web. Ep it was episode. about the stealing. Yeah. So we try to we try to use it as this. Um, <laughs> it's like this. Uh, <laughs> it's like it this, was this sub. It was a web episode where it's about you guys are all New Yorkers, obviously. It was about going out in the subway. <laughs> Someone snorted, snorted at that. <laughs> I guess you're not a real New Yorker. I don't know, but uh, it was Love about it. going out in the subway and seeing someone you know and like not really wanting to like have to ride the subway with them. Not because you don't like them. No, you just you need to be like, at the end end of the train because you go, you're going. You need to get out in the north end. Nothing against them. It's just like you know? whatever. You have like so a we plan. Like, this is a moment we need to put in the TV version. We really tried to do it. It just really didn't work. It was like, so when we were filming it, it was like, oh, man. It was like, oh, <laughs> so stiff and yeah. hard work. How often, does that, how often do your ideas not work? I mean, that didn't work because we were like, wedging it in. Like, that, that was like, uh, after that, we were like, no more of this. But um, I think, like, for the most part, we weirdly get to a place. We've never written for TV before. You know, Comedy Central. Yeah, it's no, weirdly no. letting us do this. We're like doing this, and I it's think that that's what makes the show. I, I, I read it. There was some interview where you you said that you once the show got picked up, you went to the book to Barnes and Noble to get like you know TV writing for dummies because. <laughs> like, sit down, sit down. No, we did it before that. We wrote we did a pilot a before bit before we sold then. it. Before we met Polar, you know, we um, you and were like doing just it. doing it, just doing it is like the thing. You know? Yeah. But <laughs> when did you meet Amy? We asked her to be in our final webisode. So she, um, May 2011, and we had studied at um, UCB, that's where we came up, and she founded that theater in school. So um, we got at her to be in the finale. But you hadn't met her at UCB, I'm so sorry. No, no. Never. Feel free. And we Feel like, free. got a friend of ours to ask her if she, like, you know, we knew we were ending the web series and we we're like, let's just get somebody cool. And we're like, Amy, we're like, that's like, that's like, the, there's no one else like above and that. that's when she yeah. found out about you guys? That's amazing. She actually had seen it, which was crazy. Uh, no, that you guys was don't like, even know. Like, that was the day. We were just doing the web series. That was the day where we were like, good die happy. She's just doing the web series with us. Like and then we wrote this part where she has to say, we wrote her to tell us things like, live your life, girls. Like, if you watch this web episode, it's just Amy Poehler telling us, like, what live it, here. do it. It was live crazy. Your yeah. We're like, yeah, we like, love it. It's like, please. This isn't where she trips over the box of orange. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, where, that's the first day we met. Yeah, and then she, she directed the finale yeah. of, the, of the first season of the Comedy Central. And she had been in the final webisode. It was like so full circle, it was chilling. <laughs> Truly <laughs> chilling. <laughs> Did she, and she directed the, the last episode too. What was it like being directed by her? Was she more concerned with the camera department or was she engaged with you? She was the most, I think, like actor centered, centric director. She was so, she like knows what an actor wants to like hear and think and feel and be challenged by. She was, she was really good. Yeah, and it was a very, it was like the perfect episode for her to direct too because. We had this vision of like these stylized shots that we that we collaborated with her on like forming. Like we get high in the episode. <laughs> Whatever. We get high in fucking every episode. But we get high. <laughs> 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 oh my god, we get high in the episode. And she had this like great idea. You know what I mean? Like she was just really excited about um, playing with the form and like I mean, because the, the episode is very different from our other episodes. It's almost a bottle. And we're like yeah. in this restaurant talking at a table for most of it. So how can we make it still 
interesting and engaging. I just wanted to just throw off some of the lines that I that I wrote down while I was watching it. You know, Dream, like, by the way. This is unreal. Oh, wait a minute. It's unreal. <laughs> he swore to God. You know, what are you, Christian dude? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. This is our first, first webisode. That's from our first webisode, yeah. Oh, really? So yeah. this goes back. So yeah, you did pilfer from yes. your web, from the web Yes. Nothing page. except for that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing except for that line. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. That's just an ongoing thought. Theme. Theme. Like, there's a lot of, uh, like, you know, no, uh, like I always show. wonder when people write about themselves and they or claim to write about themselves, I always wonder how much of, of this is really coming from your life or not. So there were things like, you know, like um, slide and glide. <laughs> That's a thing. Is that oh, something you that you... Right? Well, that was a thing that, like, my mom had gotten off of, like, it was like the commercials for, like, what are the infomercials for these things? And it, was a, it wasn't what we did. But when we were coming up with a class, like I did hand out flyers for Equinox, which is what Solstice is based off of. I handed out flyers on fucking 44th Street for like the cool. Times Square or whatever, Grand Central, whatever. But to um, get a membership, right? To get, again, I got a free membership. <laughs> They're like, you're the cheese board girl, aren't you? I had a cheese board, I but like I had to get rid of all the flyers. It's very. You guys should just take flyers when you see it, because like it's a. <laughs> you lose some of your soul every time someone doesn't take a flyer. But uh, this was based off my mom. There was like a sheet of like plastic, and you wore little booties, and you would like slide on this thing, and that's what I thought that we were getting. <laughs> but it, there are these little. These little gliders, that's what we ended up getting. And like that's usually like the it new comes thing. with a, like a, almost a yoga mat, but a slippery one that has like stoppers at the end. We like look, you know, Google, Google K hold this. But yeah. um, <laughs> you get the same effect with like, it's almost like those beach things that have Velcro and you like throw a little ball, it's like that, but for your feet. Oh, <laughs> really I've hard. done the kind that's in your show. It's at really crunch. fucking hard, right? <laughs> yeah. How is it? I, it's not great, you know. <laughs> but like I've like done it. Cool. It's core. Yeah, it's also, it's just, it's like one of those really, like most exercises, uh, really minimizing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That you're like, I'm a person. I like, know. when I'm not in here, like I'm listening to Lou Reed and now I'm on the sliding block. It's one of those exercises. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's most. Like, like your leg like might Reed. slip out and you're That's like, funny, man. Yeah, yeah, but you're just person. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, off balance. That's funny. And, or like, uh, you know, like any exercises with jumping? Minimizing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those are the worst. No, thank you. Like in, like in a public, uh, Pass jumping? Pass a B cup, you don't do jumping exercises. <laughs> right? B, no. you're like still fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's Sports excellent acting work. in that scene. Remember oh. when she has to do, when she like doesn't get to teach the fucking class? Okay, actually the night before. Yeah. You do a wonderful job in she that had, scene. You, but listen to this. She had yeah. norovirus the night before. What's you that? can. It's when you puke for 24 hours. Okay. Puking, puking, puking. Finally stops puking, gets an hour of sleep, comes to set, and like crushes Because I couldn't cancel. It was all bitch. my day. At the uh, gym, it was fucking the gym day, and I was like, I can't one cancel production? Scene. What am I gonna, what am I a fucking, and how I can't funny do was that. that? The fake I'm like, I get to do the, yeah, it was. Miriam told me. It was the jump rope, it was another, everything. like, uh, here What else was that day? Almost everything in the sick. gym. I get also thrown in the serious. face. Every the pilot, gym, every I get thrown gym in the scene. face. I do the Neuro water virus. cooler. Woo. Excellent work. And maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm my best version of myself when I'm sick. I don't think so. Yeah. Have you ever had that happen, Kim? Where you're like, oh my god, I'm sick, and it's like I'm so much less present that I can do such a better job, kind of, because I'm I just my brain isn't as loud. I'm hungover. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wow. That's true. I've done some of my best work hungover. No way, really, for real. Yeah, for real. Like what? Because you feel you have to focus more. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just like kind of there's wow. nothing left. I fucking burned every bridge. My whole life is over. Yeah. <laughs> except except for this one piece of business that I have left to do. Yeah. Uh, that's that's usually on a low budget movie too. Yeah. I'd never get away with that on the, you know. Now that you've 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 been in, you've been the creators you've been in control of the content of the show all throughout the web series I assume you didn't have like guest writers on the web series now you have writers coming in to sort of help you you know uh, to offset the, the the pressure of like you know uh, banging out all these scripts does that 
make you feel like a, a loss of control or are you apprehensive about that in any way? We make the hires, so it's um, pretty comfortable and creatively encouraging. We don't, we're not like, because um, Comedy Central like gets it, like it would be so dumb and like flat and like wrong if it was like, you gotta hire this guy who worked on whatever, it's like, they, they like so get it, so, um, you know, wow. it, it gets to be like deeper and deeper and deeper into this voice in this world. Um, and so far we've yeah. hired people that we knew because it is like really based on us. Yeah. So it would be like backpedaling a lot if it was like, hello, welcome. I'm Abby. This is, you know, like, it'll be like in especially the room, last it's like, year. oh, Abby, this thing that you say. And you're like, oh, I say that. Or like, Alana, remember this one time you said? And it's, so it's, uh, we need our writers. And, oh, this is another one. If you train your eyes, you can see their religion. <laughs> now, this is when they're watching the basketball uh, courts on um, uh, Waverly or, or down on Houston Street. Yeah, the, yeah, West Forth. Yeah. yeah. West Forth. How can you tell? I mean, just through the outline on the... If there's a head shape or just it continues in the same line. Yeah. Right? Is that Wait, the... that... that uh... I'm like that telling you scene how to tell. was like maybe the most fun scene. Amy, that's in the finale. Amy directed that scene, obviously. And those boys had so much fun. Oh, right? they had that's so much fun. But she was like, "Guys, you gotta, you know." And they're wearing Prosthetic. prosthetics, like. And Not she's even... like, "Guys, you just gotta go like this. <laughs> Hold the ball. I just go like this, so they could like." Right, Amy's telling them. Yeah. <laughs> so that was like. Um, you need. She needed to create more movement. They like. There wasn't enough movement. Our props people are like taking it so seriously, and and they ended up doing. Um, you know those like weird like almost like pocket pussies that turn inside out and inside out and inside out, and they're filled with like sparkle or it's, gel. It's not even a, a pocket pussy. It's like a weird like balloon that like slips out of your hand. Yeah, no, it's not a real pocket pussy. But it's like a pocket pussy. That like I meant genuinely. Oh my god, that's like. fucking scary. Is that really a pocket pussy for like a kid? Oh, I just said it's. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. You yes, it is. Carnivals and stuff, it is right? like a janky pocket pussy for a child, but not a legit like flashlight for an adult. You know what I mean? I hope but we're then giving too much anyone any ideas. Ugh. But then they put like strings through that, and then around the guy's waist, and the guys are like really like doing it and doing it. <laughs> they were so. Um, we were also right across the street from like. A row oh, of they, sex shops. They they got on Sixth Ave and Fourth and West Fourth. They got like yeah. these like giant dildos. Nothing. Not good enough. Not like <laughs> weirdly not as good as the pussies. Who is your location scout? Like you guys have the best locations. Joey CD. Is that is that something that you're you're aware of and that you're kind of uh, oh yeah do you give him notes or do you tell him can we get this place do you, are these locations uh, uh, places that you've dreamed of shooting before or is this just him well finding like cool places like to that shoot? scene we were like we want to shoot on that on those basketball courts okay, like yeah. that is like he's always like sweating and like sort of like on his collar Joey C yeah. but, but he like makes it happen and a lot of our mm. you know a lot of our stuff is based <laughs> on uh, really specific locations like like one of the episodes is like you know we go to Grand Central we go to Penn Station we go like oh. Chinatown so we have to like you know go to those places yeah. but they managed to find like the best little nooks and stuff. Oh, it's so I, I, great. Watching that show, you really are like, oh, this is why it's so great to shoot in New York. I mean, it really, Absolutely. because it's yeah. such a, it, you just, it's a totally different animal. Like even like that episode where you guys uh, go home with the DJs and it's like, oh, we're gonna fuck you, fuck you. You want a fucking four way, right? So that, that would be a totally different kind of a episode if that would like took place in whatever California or something it would just be like oh this is really creepy but in New York it's like oh yeah this happens or something <laughs> you know what I mean like it's just a to it just somehow loses it's like you know well, grossness or something it's, it's just so that happened in like, special Wisconsin you'd be like I'm gonna get what the fuck up. I'm getting right? up right? I don't know I don't know what happens like, there yeah. but yeah. and the walk-ups you know what I mean right. uh, yeah, the whole bit. I just have to say, as 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 a lifelong New Yorker, you know, I I just I love I love that part of the show. That every every oh time 
you know, you cut to an, an, <laughs> a, a new scene. Yeah. It's it's like, it's like <laughs> I, was another just, great I was just there. I was just <laughs> I can't there. Even. It's yeah. so I was just there, and that I happened to me. Up. I gotta you know. say, the use of uh, Washington Square Park is uh, mind boggling. I've never really thought of it as like my park. I've always thought of it as a, is that like a young people's park? Because I've always been like a Tompkins Square kind of a park, or do you know what I mean? Have you spent a lot of time in Washington Square Park? Sure. Really? Because I always think of it as like the NYU a little bit, that yeah. park. But you guys make it feel like, you know, whenever like Hannibal Burris shows up or whatever from behind a bush, you feel like it's like, oh my God, it's like a brand new untapped oh park. You know what I mean? That's incredible. Thank you. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't yeah, feel yeah. like a tourist you know, park. It feels you've, like the you've, chess park. You've liberated it from the, it's, the, the lockdown that it's sort yeah. of overcome it in the past few Which years. Which is it's a like, shame, what with the art yeah, and yeah. everything. I, I went to NYU and like when I was in NYU, I was like, this is Gross in a way, like it's just crazy. Like um, I don't know, it's like a tanning salon for NYU students. Or something. It is, you know what I mean? Like it's like it's like a Babs. Yeah, yeah. It's like a hot young rich people Babs, and it's like I like to watch, but I want to like sit in there. You know what I mean? I met my boyfriend there. At an Angela Davis rally, yeah, during Occupy Wall Street in Washington Square Park. Yeah. Oh my wow. God, that's Elena and, and the character in real life's dream. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> at an Angela Davis rally. Yeah, yeah. What? That's incredible. And he's a winner. That's incredible. <laughs> I met my boyfriend in Washington Square Park. Did you actually. really? I was um, like, <laughs> what room? <laughs> Oh, is he David? Is your boyfriend David? Oh my god, I'm totally fucking your boyfriend, but I live with him. Uh, this is complicated. I'm going honestly, to go to Washington Square Park tomorrow morning. I'm, like, I'm hitting Walk that around. age where if my boyfriend was fucking with you, I'd be like, that's fucking a great job. Though. I'd be like so proud of him. You know what I mean? And that yeah, is so sweet. I'd be like, I just want to fucking watch the, so the, the internet or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I gotta, so you got to watch Blacklist. Fucking hit the that's road. That's my jam. I'd be like, good job, dude. I, 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 I just wanted to ask, you know, Hannibal Barris, the comedian. Yeah, give it up for Hannibal. He's, he's credited with being a, a consultant. What, is, what does that mean? How is he more than just an actor on your show? He um, infuses himself into the character and um, influences our voice. He... Um, you know, we like think a lot about him for Lincoln. Yeah. And also his, um, Hannibal is like awkward and <laughs> random, which is like cool and hot and like has been for 10 years and will be for 10 more years and then we'll all be out of jobs, you know, or something. <laughs> but, um, you know, our, so our styles sync up. We think, we talk about him like in the room, you know, and think about his like bits. We've been talking about his stand up. Yeah, he, Hannibal, um, I met Hannibal at this thing that, at 92 I Tribeca. No, which, we met him at Parkside doing improv. Oh, but that was so long. I oh, guess I did meet him there. All right, we met him. We were doing improv at Parkside Lounge, and he was new at um, stand-up in the city. It was we like, were like, what the fuck is your this name? This was like you know? 2006, maybe. And he was just had just moved from Chicago, I think. And he was like on the same night as us, randomly. And then we met him again. We were showing an episode of the web series at this little film festival at 92Y Tribeca that you... Is, that, is it... Did they fucking close The up? Tribeca's closed. 92Y fuck, exists. Fuck that. But Jay Stern and Victor Vornado... Um, uh, Victor Vornado's a New York director, had this Iron Mule film festival. And, and we were, like, so pumped to be in this thing. And Hannibal was there one night and was, like, a fan of the web series. And we were such a fan of his. And then... I mean, we pitched the show with him as Lincoln, and that was... It's pretty amazing how he wants more from the relationship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, than, than you're sort of ready to, 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 to come up with, you know, yourself. And yeah. That he's he has to do a fascinating thing in that role. When you think about that, like, you know, it's so great that he's, uh, you know, it's your, you guys are the ladies, it's your show, so ultimately, like, the boy is in the girl, right? Part, uh, Amy went, uh, said that to me once, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's an interesting, uh, yeah, not, nice. not about your show in particular, but just how that kind of works, you know, which is when a man ends up being in the role of, like, the girlfriend, you know, which is unfamiliar that because, is so you know, funny. for so many women, it's, they're used to that as actresses, like, that they have to be the part of, like, 
the girl, you know, like even like the greats, like, they, well, no, it's a bad example, but I was just thinking like, you know, even Kathy Moriarty in Raging Bull or something is still like, it's, you know, it's De Niro's fucking story. And, you know, mm. uh, except for the stuff where it's really gets very heavy, she's, you know, by the pool essentially. And anyway, what Hannibal does in that part of being so singular and like fleshed out and idiosyncratic and a character you've never seen before in your life, like completely stand on his own, even though he's essentially just, you know, your boyfriend is, uh, it is pretty mind-blowing. The red-headed ex-boyfriend with the remote control. Tim. Tim Martin. He is incredibly Tim Martin. brilliant. Just, that, this dude is like gonna, oh, he, he's, he introduced us. Yeah. He he's, introduced, that's how you met, yeah. through, through him. How? Huh? Invited to this group. They were friends in a class I was dating At him. UCB. And he invited us each to this group, this improv group. And um, that we were and on, me and my brother yeah. to this improv group and Abby from class, and uh, we were like, "You're cool to each other." <laughs> and I yeah. thought you were Elijah Shawcat. She thought I was maybe from Arrested Development. All you talking about? That's funny. She's like, "She's gonna make For the my whole career. rehearsal." And then we go to the bar. We go to went to McManus after, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, McManus. Yeah. On a Do you know me? Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Great bar. Great bar. <laughs> <laughs> And she was like, um, talking about being from Smithtown, and we had like a mutual friend in common from, from I, my, I went to college with people that went to high school with her, and I was like, this isn't, this isn't. Well, I just it turned out okay. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah, he's great. I love that, that scene where you're saying, where he's saying, why don't we meet at that place where our souls met? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you say, our souls didn't meet. He goes, I know. <laughs> and then he's that weird ending with the 50s music. And how the, good was that song? Whoa. Right? Free. Song. I think they're oh, amazing. It was, it was free. The musicians. How did that we, we are very conscious of how much music costs Who is now. Who music supervisor? <gasps> this guy, Matt FX. Matt Feldman, like Asian 22. Jew. What up? <laughs> he's 22. He's from the Get city who wears like weird you know? clothes that only New York City kids could wear. Where you're like, is that a shoe? You know? He like looks. It's like it's like it's like he made like opening ceremony like hat. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He like wears like church hats. Not really. Like southern. But like, his shoes hats, are like that. But he's like that cool. <laughs> he like DJs. He's so cool. But he finds these bands that you know. In the show, every once in a while, we have an expensive song that is like based completely around the scene. Like we did this like um, music video um, that was a, we'll start like, from the bottom, the break. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we we like needed it to be that song. So like all the other songs are like just underground, like new artists for the most part yeah. that he found. Yeah, That's he's great, dope. and he has a he does a ser like a series on the show. What is it? Broad like. The, about the music every week. Uh, it's like, be a video about the. It's um, like, um, you know, funny, like yeah, the it's music of music. Broad City, and then he'll explain where it's all from. Yeah. You have things that you do on your own. You have the 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 uh, uh, the uh, solo show that you did. Oh yeah, camp, yeah. I did. Something. I did a show uh, about camp a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah, and that was that. Did you do that while you and Alana were doing Broad City? Yeah, um, we did the web series, and I was doing the show, and Alana would help. Change my clothes I'm behind the stage. Of that. I like, I, I we like. shot the finale episode. We shot the day with Amy, and then drove up. I had like my my mom's car because we were like I had to store the oranges in the car. Like I went to get it was a whole thing, and we drove up to UCB to do my show, and we're like backstage, and I'm about to do the show, and I'm like, what are we doing? I'm like sh holding her shorts out. Cause I'm like kind of good with kids. So it's like you know, it's like dressing a kid when you're like a stage manager. It's like yeah. one foot, the other. You know what I mean? So I did that while we were doing the web series. Oh, wow. And you have a film, How to Follow Strangers. Yeah, that's right. Um, written and directed by Chioke Nasor. It's a feature film. You're the lead in it. Mm -hmm. I was now, very and you were with that you were doing that also while these are like side projects. What uh, are you going to pursue solo projects while you do Broad City, or are you completely? committed to doing Broad City now and just being a unit? I mean, Broad City is the number one. It's like this beacon for us. But we find, we have like a lot of solo things going on and we find that um, we keep each other in check. Like, 
improve, bitch, we gotta improve, bitch, gotta improve, bitch, you know, and it's like, I'm doing this, like, you're writing a script, oh, I should write a script, oh, you're doing Webster's, oh, I should do, you know, I'm and releasing it's... releasing a single. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. Um, I have a clothing line, she's a clothing line. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we uh, clothing line. I like went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a sort That's of a good prank though. What? We all, yeah, we a lifestyle blog and like Goop, and you do a lifestyle blog. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But um, it's it's cool. It's like the stronger we are as individuals, the stronger our synergy is. We're we um, just want to do as much as possible um, before we. Hate the industry oh. <laughs> and lay that and uh, die. Yeah. Straight yeah. up, also. Yeah, 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 and die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all will. Well, on that <laughs> note, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Alana. Thank you, and Abby. Thank you for sharing this with wow. us. What an honor! What an honor! I'm the I'm the director. And thank you all for being here. Thanks so much. This is, this is, this is great. That's our show for the evening. Hi.